Hello everyone, Karen Glasser here and welcome to The Peak Stage, a show about wonderful personal stories, inspiration, and the never-ending pursuit of what's next. The Peak Stage is brought to you by Vital C, the guide to living in this stage of growth, purpose, and discovery. With guests from all walks of life, join us as we learn and share their inspiring stories of reinvention, resilience, and perspective. Likewise, our stories are still being written. With one thing that we know for sure, we are not done yet. Today, we are welcoming Beth Broderick to the stage. Beth made her motion picture debut in Stealing Home and has appeared on the big screen in many other movies, including Bonfire the Vanities and Fool's Rush In, just to name a couple. She has appeared in several television movies and starred in numerous television series, including my favorite, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, as well as a guest star on The Closer, CSI, Bionic Woman, Cold Case, Castle Leverage, ER, just to name a few. I'm tired, Beth, totally tired right now. Beth is also a tireless humanitarian, being a founder of Momentum, one of the country's first organizations to help people with AIDS. In addition, Beth has worked with the Good Shepherd Home in LA for over 30 years. And without further ado, we welcome Beth to the show. Hey, Beth. Hello, hi. everyone. Hi. Oh my gosh. You know, when I only picked, like I cherry picked stuff to put to introduce you, but you are um, quite the accomplished woman. You have done a lot of things. Um, and I'm just thrilled that one of the things is the peak stage that you're joining us here today. Oh. Um, you know, one of the things that we start with is the word reinvention. And so I want to ask you a question. What moments in the past of all those things that you have done have helped form you to who you are today? Well, I think I think the, the the big one of the big blessings in my life is that I'm I'm not a single identity person. Uh, I write for the Huffington Post. I'm an actress. I'm a really good cook. I um, and I have a lot of interest in in you know the the political and social well being of my fellow citizens. Right. So all of these things, you know, make up my identity as a as a person. And I think. You know, my industry is notorious. I mean, it's famously difficult for females to age in Hollywood. And there are myriad, myriad of reasons for that. Right. But I think one of the reasons it's been easy for me or easier is that it's I'm not a single identity person. I'm not just an actress. I'm a lot of other things. And so I don't feel like, oh, well, they don't, you know, I can't do those jobs because I'm over 45. Well, so what? I'll do other things. Right. There's a million things that, that interest me that, that I want to participate in. And, you know, so every time um, someone asks me, you know, how I feel about getting older, I'm just, I'm, I, I feel thrilled. I right. mean, to me, it's like, when I was 50 and I decided, I don't think I have to live in LA. I've only ever lived in LA and New York. Why can't I do something else? And I was like, I think I can, cause I'm just going to go ahead and do it right? and see what happens. And I moved lock, stock and barrel to Austin, Texas, where I knew no one. And I've built a really wonderful life for myself here. And it's a great place to wow. travel from. And, and so that was a big adventure for me, you know, and I can't imagine there's so many more adventures ahead. And I'm excited, looking forward to them, you know? I agree with you. We, right before the show, we were talking about gray hair. I mean, the fact that things have changed so much and the fact that our silver is now something that is a positive rather than, oh my God, you've got silver hair, you are never work in this, in this arena, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think it's, it's important for us, all of us silver girls who are stepping into our power that way. Is it hard to reinvent yourself? I mean, is there a process? Do you say, okay, I'm going to go do this now and I have to make sure I've done this, this, and this before I can do that. Is it a hard thing or you just do it? Well, I think, I think, I think reinvention is a tricky word because I think I, I like to prefer, I prefer the word evolution. Okay. Um, only because I think that everything that you are and have done is is part of what's going to be, you know, opening up new avenues uh -huh. as, as your life changes and expands, you know, when you're approaching retirement or approaching your 60s or approaching, you know, I have a friends who just turned 65 yesterday and they're like, Medicare, like God said, Medicare, here I come, you know, and like in a really happy way, positive way. Right. Right. You know, there are there are wonderful things about being older. There are freedoms inherent yeah. in it that you don't have 
um, when you're, you know, in your forties and you're trying to make sure that you have set yourself up in life. Mm -hmm. That's a, when you're just focused nonstop on work and achievement. And so I think like, I have a friend who's a creativity Nazi, you know, he's always like, have you been creative today? And I'm like, you know what? No, but I walked my dog. All right. <laughs> and that was fun. Like, so no, I didn't write the great American novel today. No. Like, so there is like a kind of like, I'm worried about sort of the, 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 you can do it Nazis, you know, like, because yeah. <laughs> you I get can that. do it if you want to do it, you know, and if you want to sit down and have a, 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 you know, a margarita with your eggs, Benedict, then do that, you know, I'm, because I'm you're coming over. Freedom. I'm coming over. I want a margarita with my eggs Benedict. You talked right? about, you know, writing and stuff. I mean, you're also a writer and a director. Um, how does that different difference from, you know, being an actress or an actor in a movie, but being on the other side, being the director or the writer? Which one do you like better or do you like them both? Well, uh, writing, I'm really, I'm a, I'm a, I think my 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 big claim to fame or my calling is as an essayist so right. that's a kind of an entirely different world to live in mm -hmm. and it's really important to me to express myself that way but as far as directing you know i started directing at a time when women were not uh encouraged to do it at all and right. i mean we used to sit there at the dga all these women and just talk about why no one would hire us i mean and i actually i got really bored with that and just decided mm -hmm. to go take another series as an actor because it was just like depressing, so boring, right. you know, and it really wasn't until me too and all the rest of it that people started, you know, saying, okay, well, maybe we should start hiring some women. Maybe we should find a balance here. But when I was doing it, there really was no way to, right. you know, you know, when people would say, well, you know, you've been on TV with in mini skirts for years. People don't think you're very smart. Yeah. And I would be like, seriously, people don't think I'm very smart. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because wow. I wore mini skirts. So, wow. You know, so when I was really trying to go for that, there was a lot of opposition and a lot of and and you know when getting to the top one percent of a profession as difficult as the acting profession. That's a lot. That's moving a lot of the very heavy boulder up a big darn hill. Yeah. And I just didn't feel like picking up another heavy rock. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to let this go. I loved directing. I preferred it to acting, honestly. But it would, there was just no, I mean, I could have beat my head against the wall and made it happen. And some people did, and they're stronger, better people than me. But I was just like, yeah. No. <laughs> And yeah. so you're an actress. I mean, you are an actress. You you have been in as we as I discussed when I introduced you and didn't even name everything. You are an actress, but you have an, a new a new television movie coming out. You mm -hmm. are on Lifetime. You've done a lot of movies for Lifetime, but this new one that's coming out clearly for Christmas called Blending Christmas. Tell can you tell us anything about it? When it when will it just be coming out? Well, we don't have a release date yet, but that should be coming soon. We should have an announcement pretty soon. Um, it was just an awful lot of fun. You can see Greg Evigan there and a bunch of it. people who may or may not be Brady's. Um, so like, it was really a lot of fun to do. I, I love little Haley Mel She's uh, Haley Duff rather. She's just a lovely, adorable human. They were all great. Aaron who played my son. Um, so it was, it was really a fun experience and it's a group that I like to work with. I love, I love, love doing Christmas movies and I've done a lot of them um, <laughs> because it's, it makes people happy. You know, people are always asking me, well, what's your favorite series? You know, I did a series with Brad Pitt. I did all kinds of things. And you know, my favorite series is Sabrina the Teenage Witch because it makes young right. people happy in every country in the world right. still to this day. Right. You can't get better than that. It doesn't get better than making right. my young favorite. people I love happy. It. Right. Right. Ab absolutely. Like, that's such a privilege. It's such an honor to be able to do that. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, we also mentioned that you are involved in and one of the founders of Momentum. Tell us a little bit about that organization and, and all the good that you've done for the AIDS and, and the people that are suffering. Well, you, you know, I started very early, 1984. Um, it was still called Gay Men's Cancer then. And there was no one. 
no one wanted to help. There was just a tremendous amount of fear. You can kind of, we've had a little bit of a parallel with the pandemic and the, all the fears and how you can get it and all these, you know, conspiracies and theories right. and, and terror, you know, and I, and I remember reading about this, this bill that was being put forth in the, in the state Senate to quarantine all gay men. And I thought, oh my God, this is a civil rights matter, not just an illness. So I marched myself down to this, there was one little room, the wow. one desk in it, uh, the gay men's health crisis. There was one desk and one guy behind it. And I said, don't let anybody be alone on Thanksgiving. Wow. I will be there. I, I will be there. And he was really not that interested in my help. He was like, mm, I don't get it. You're a lady. So I don't get it. But I got a call mm. later from my who guy who became my partner, Peter, Peter Avitable. And he said, are you really a woman? Are you a woman? I need a woman so bad. I need a woman. <laughs> they won't let me into the, the, the grant boards. They won't let me in. I was like, yes, yes, yes. I'm a woman. I'm a, actually, yes. I'm, and he's like, can you meet me? So I met him. Wow. At Thanksgiving, I met him at a, a St. John's in the village, and we served dinner to 13 young men. Wow. And, of course, in those days, life expectancy was six to eight months uh, from diagnosis. Right. So these boys came in. Still makes me cry. Yeah. Can't even They imagine. came in, um, you know, emaciated with walkers and wheelchairs and giant swaths of carposi sarcoma all over them but they sat down and and we served them dinner and i went and i touched each one of them and held each one of them and i realized oh my god when you're this sick you need your mom and a yeah. lot of people abandoned their kids just left them to die alone in new york city so that was it for me i was like i'm whatever and he was like i need you i said i'm there whatever you there. wow so we just started wow. this program um and eventually we had a free clothing store, a free grocery store. We had a sit down dinner where people could bring their families. Um, and we had, you know, uh, it was all about sort of trying to re reduce the stigmatization right. and the isolation. And also we had like, even if we got people less SI benefits, they had to spend it down for their medications. There was no right. medication that was approved. And they could not possibly afford food or clothing. Some people lost 50 pounds in three months. They had nothing yeah. to wear. Yeah, they didn't wear. They didn't. Nothing to wear. So, like, wow. it wasn't that I set out to start an AIDS program. No one, you know, no one wakes up and goes, hey, here's something good I'm going to do. Yeah, today. right. I just got drawn in and, and then couldn't leave. Because when I was there, it was a crisis. And then we watched it, you know, turn into an epidemic and then a pandemic as I was standing there. Right. And I remember one Christmas, we were having this Christmas dinner for people. And we looked up and 200 people came through the door. We had food for like 50. Oh, my so God. So I'm running down the streets of New York, going into restaurants, going, give me a turkey. Just give me a turkey. I need turkey. <laughs> Give me a thing of soup. I'm like I need food. You know, like I've got these people from restaurants following me down the street with you know big vats of soup and stuff. Oh like, my gosh! Yeah, just running through New York, like begging for food. But we got we got everybody fed, you know. And we used to have like people would come and you know incomparable New York performers would come and see. Barbara Cook came and sang for us a wow. couple of times. Wow. You can know, people get involved now. Is this something that people can get involved with now? Momentum still exists. I went to the 25th anniversary of it a few years ago. Um, it still exists. Yeah, and uh, and you can look it up. It's in New York City. There's a lot of um, you know. There's AIDS program in Los Angeles. There's the Gay Men's Health Crisis. There's still right. uh, Amphire. There's still a lot of organizations out there doing great work for people with. HIV and AIDS and, 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 you know, I learned, I learned so much doing that because there was no, no, a lot of people did not want to participate and did not want to help. And, and it was very frightening and frustrating to try to reach, do community outreach around something that people were so afraid of. And, you know, I used to tell the other volunteers, I'm like, look, you give one person, they know 25 others. 
Right. We right. One mind. We get one person to have empathy for the situation. We get one person to help. And they'll, they'll tell their community. And, and there, and that, you know, so I would go to like the 73rd street block association. And I would say, can you guys give me two turkeys? Not, can you guys give me, you know, raise money, but you know, do you think as a group, you would be willing to get me two turkeys? Right. Well, yeah, they're going to give you two turkeys, right? Because, I mean, how could they say no? Right, right. But now the whole block association is talking yeah. about how people with AIDS are going hungry in their city. So now the whole block association, their minds have just opened a little bit right. to be able to hear what I need them to hear, which yeah. is your community needs you. you You've know? done such good. You have done such good. I hope that people will check this out, Momentum, at least somewhere that they can look in, into it and see how they might participate. But there's a lot of different organizations as well. Um, I think that the point here, Beth, is that you saw the need. You saw something that needed to be responded to. And you didn't question it. You responded in a mm -hmm. very big way. And uh, so I want, I want to move into resilience because one of the things that we talk about is that there are things that happen in our lives that we have to overcome to reach whatever point that we are right now. And I guess the question is, what have you overcome and how has it changed you? And more importantly, how has it changed your perspective on life? Well, I've always been like wildly healthy. I had one, you know, health issue and that was my reproductive system, which finally ended up in hysterectomy. So I, I was never able to have children and that was a big it took me about 10 years to make peace with that and to find a way through that, 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 you know, it's no longer a source of pain for me. I mean, there's, I have so many kids in my life that I love and that I'm an anti Beth to hundreds and tons of kids. Um, so, you know, I, I came to terms with it. Um, but I always, you know, I've always been fit and I've always been, you know, I've always loved that feeling of being fit. You know, and, and the in your the way your muscles respond when your feet hit the ground. And then like three years ago, I was going through this airport on my way home from shooting a Christmas movie uh, called Romance at Reindeer Lodge. <laughs> and um, that was Hallmark, I think. And um, I, I suddenly couldn't, my right foot stopped working. I couldn't walk. I, I, I mean, I was just limping all of a sudden. And I was like... Oh my God, somehow I broke a toe. What did I do? Did I hit it on something? So stupid. You know, what a klutz, what a ding dong. So <laughs> then I get home and I'm like, not a broken toe. Like, but I still can't really walk. And then, like, all this weird stuff started happening. I had these horrible sores all over my body and my hands were covered with blisters and my feet were covered with blisters. And I was like, I don't get it. And everything hurt. Like I could, if I could pick up this glass, uh, wow. and I would just be in agony. And I was like, okay, well, I don't. I finally went to my GP, and she's like, she looks at my hands, and she's like, I have no idea what's going on, but we better find out. Right. And so she sent me to this dermatologist, and look, God love him, and he diagnosed me as having psoriatic arthritis, and and he kept saying over and over again. Oh, it's a terrible disease. It's such oh. a bad disease. I'm so, and so I finally was like, okay, well, now we know, but I need a different derm dermatologist because I don't exactly. want to really talk about exactly. what a terrible disease I have all day long. Like, no, let's just move forward. And, you know, so uh, the rheumatologist and I've, I've been through different kinds of medications. And, and so I went from being this wildly fit person to being someone whose first steps of every day are just excruciating. Are challenging, yeah excruciating really really painful and you know they gave me they loaded me up with pain meds and prednisone and they're all in a box in my closet because i'm not taking any of that and i just you know i put that foot down and i roll through it and i roll through it and i keep going and i keep going and then i walk my dog for four miles and that's just how that's going to go wow you know so you hit it head on you're doing what you need to do to take care of yourself and um that's, I think, a lesson for a lot of us is sometimes you just have to move through it. You just have to go through it, you know. Yeah. And also, like, you know, then I got a, a rheumatologist and he was, you know, they're, they're very condescending to older women, a lot of these doctors. Right. And I kept saying, you know, my hair's falling out. This is really not working. Like, that, not, nothing's, the symptoms aren't improving. And right. he goes, oh, you're fine. You're a sick woman. People are sick. Their hair falls out. Like, he really, like, literally... 
Okay, you needed another new doctor. <laughs> so I went to the, who I have a female dermatologist. So I told her that, and of course, her eyes are like, yeah, mm -hmm. she's in, instantly furious. Yeah, and um, so she put me on a different medication, and that one didn't quite work either. And so my new rheumatologist was like, well, it's working better. Like, so she had to do it again. So she's like, no, 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 we're going to try one more thing. And I'm on this new medication that is actually helping. Oh, I'm, that, so, well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm totally So glad. you also have to be a real advocate for yourself. You yes. have to say, you know what? That's not good enough, sir. I, I want better. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, he said, well, I have, you're doing great. I have patients in wheelchairs. I'm like, that's not what I want to hear. What no. I want to hear is how can I what how can I have optimal health considering this that I have this disease? And in this day and age, Beth, I think this is so important. You have to be able to advocate for yourself, especially through the, the what we've just all been going through, the pandemic and all those other things. We have to learn how to advocate for ourselves because quite frankly, if we don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. Nobody no. else is going to. And if no. you don't have someone if you don't know how to advocate for yourself, then you need a friend to help you. Yes, you, know, you need to reach out to someone and say, you know what, I don't help. think I'm getting the treatment I need or deserve. Right. And that, you know, you just need to keep pushing until you get what you need. Because Agreed. a lot of doctors, especially older people, sorry, but they just don't listen. Right. They just figure, well, you're 62 and you got a bad disease. And we're here you to know. change that. We are here to change that. I mean, this is what, yeah. this is what the quick stage is all about. We're here to change this. It's not the end of the world when you hit a certain age. In fact, I think it's the best time of our lives right now. I am delighted to be where I am at this time. Oh, me too. I went, yeah. Oh, no, I love being this yeah. age. I tell and, everybody, oh, you're turning 60? Come on in. The water is warm. Come on in. The water Come on is in. warm. It's great. Exactly. It feels good in here. So, you know, at the peak stage, we would rather than focusing on topics of those things that keep us up at night, and we all know what those things are, we would rather discuss finding new passions to jump out of bed for in the morning. Mm -hmm. So that leads me to ask you the next question. What's next for you, Beth? What are you passionate about? I know you've got the movie coming up and you've got so many things going on. What's next in your world? Well, there's so much going on in my world all the time. Um, you know, I'm also very passionate about travel and I'm very passionate about writing. I'm working on a story about this disease and and kind of working through mm -hmm. it and coming coming getting getting over the hump of it and just saying you know what okay well whatever you know my doctor said i said just so what this is me i'm like yeah i'm in pain i'm gonna go walk my dog i mean that's how that's gonna go right like, i don't care I, I um, so there's a lot of uh excitement for me just in everyday living and 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 in the writing that i'm doing and i'm doing a new mini series for HBO, can't tell you the name, but that's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to working on that project. So I'm really one of the lucky ones. I'm so blessed. I I uh, I have a reputation as someone that never stops working, and and I'm so grateful for that um, because it's not the case for everyone. Yeah. And I am grateful and humbled to still be included in all these projects. You know, so there's a lot, and I think I told you this. Uh, I have a guy who's a friend of mine who's a very successful model and owns a modeling management company is recruiting me to do some modeling for him so i mean i think that's just a hoot i think that's so much fun and you know and of honestly, course you said yes you said yes of course i said yes sure, i said yes i think it's weird but i said yes you know there's i did not have time to do that kind of thing when i was younger and thank god i was very busy on series and stuff right. But I have more time now and there's like, and, and it's also, you know, it's so much harder to stay fit at this age and we all right. know that, but here's a great reason to do it, right? Like I'm not exactly. doing a lingerie suit unless I'm fit. So like, there, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's really fun. Um, you know, would you so have ever thought, would you have ever thought you hit a certain age and then all of a sudden you're going to, you're, you're going to model? I mean, you know, we have, a, I think personally, we have preconceived notions of what we do in certain ages, mm -hmm. right? Models, we have already, always been told, at least I've been told, you get to a certain age and you, you age out of being a right, model. Right, right, right. And hey, now it's, I, it's actually like, it's going the other way. The pendulum, they're looking for you know, beautiful women inside and out that are, um, that have done amazing things and happen to have gray hair. So yeah. 
I, yeah, there's I, a lot like, of us out there. And I think you and I have talked about this too, you know. I mean, I look in my closet every day and I'm like, mm, mm, like, I know I can wear that, but should I? You know, like the, 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 these like fashion yeah. for people our age and nobody's really, you know, and, and, and God love them. I mean, she goes, it's fine for some people, but I'm not, I don't need, I don't need a, a mumu and a shmata. I need some decent things to wear that are right. age appropriate. Right, right. And, you know, like it's, I had this costume designer on Sabrina years ago. And, and finally I just went to her and said, Diane, yes, I can wear skin tight orange rodeo pants, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I should. Doesn't mean it's <laughs> the right thing to wear. Yes, I can put them on. And you know, but I don't think I should. But there, you were you you stood up for yourself. I mean, you just you you all. I think a lot of people think that they're not allowed to actually say what they think. Mm. Right? And and you stood up for yourself. You know, first of all, you are totally fascinating. I'm going to continue to follow everything that you're doing because I kind of want what you're having. Um, <laughs> But and I know that our, our viewers are going to want to know how they can follow you as well. In addition to just turning the TV on and there you are, um, they can follow you on social media. They can follow you on Instagram at mm -hmm. Beth Broderick. They can follow you on Facebook. Uh, just type in the search window, say Beth Broderick official fan page, and they can follow you on Twitter. You're everywhere at Beth Broderick. And you can find out what's new and, and different and, and what Beth is up to. And I'm sure if they want to, you know, like a post of yours or comment, I'm sure you love that. I mean, you want that engagement. You want to know that people are out there listening to what you have to say. And um, I want to thank you. Are there any last thoughts you want to share with our Well, audience? you know, I think I'd like to share with you how much I appreciate what you guys are doing and what you're working on with Vital C because I really think it's important. I... I love the idea that you're creating a platform for all of us to engage with yes. that is really about what the opportunities are with aging. Right. Because right. I feel it's very, you know, there are a lot of opportunities and people talk about what the limitations are, but I want to talk about what the ways that we can expand. And I, I think that this, this uh, concept of yours is brilliant and is really going to be a big contributor to that. So thank I thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. And I we well, we look forward to having you participate in all of those things as well. Beth, thank you for your time today. I know you are going off to uh, another appointment. And yeah. um, I want to thank our audience. You have a choice as to where you spend your time. You chose to spend it with Beth and I today. And we are eternally grateful for that because we know that time is challenging sometimes. So thank you for being with us today. Go out and give somebody an awesome day and we'll see you next time on the peak stage. Bye everyone. Bye.